let's get on our feet to welcome the man, the myth, the legend, Walter money today so move forward seriously move forward you got a chance you got an opportunity to come and get some money from the guy who's throwing money at the front of the room this is your opportunity life doesn't just have people throwing money at you unless you're at the hundred millionaire summit standing at the front of the room <laughs> give yourselves a round of applause VIPs oh my god my people <laughs> we had a blast last night it was awesome. I loved hanging with each and every one of you last night. Who here flew all the way from somewhere on the West Coast? West Coast, where are you? <laughs> what about the East Coast? Who flew from New England? Yeah, New England in the house. <laughs> My people, isn't it nice not being cold? Oh. Uh, Come on now, there's a lot of money on the stage up here. I feel like a guy who just threw a lot of money all over his house. Who's done that before? Yeah, take a seat. Give yourselves a round of applause. Great job. All right. Who here is a real estate agent? Show of hands, agents. Excellent. What about a real estate wholesaler? Where are my wholesalers at? Wholesalers? All right, okay, there's a few of you out there. Excellent. Uh, Darina, do you have my sunglasses that are in my car? There's no way you possibly have them. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, any of the coaches, if you got a pair of sunglasses, could find a pair or bring a pair and bring them up here. I'm going to need them in like 10 minutes to do a quick little lesson. No way. Is that Vinny Chopra? Yeah. Vinny! <laughs> Let's bring Vinny on stage for a second. <laughs> Let's give Vinny a big round of applause. Abundance mindset. <laughs> Thank you, bro. I appreciate you. All right. So I'm going to put these right here. I'm going to need those in just a second. What about real estate flippers? Where are my flippers at? Rehab, fix and flip. Yeah. Where are my real estate fix and flip rehabbers? Yeah, you make the money, right? <laughs> yeah, you do. What are my landlords? Where are my landlords at? Ooh, stand up, landlords. Stand up. It's the only room that we really celebrate landlords, right? <laughs> Excellent. Give, look around, look around. I can almost guarantee you those are the millionaires in the room. I can almost guarantee you. Almost. Well, mostly because I know. I know all of them because millionaires hang together. Give our landlords a round of applause. Great job. Keep up the good work, right? Take a seat, take a seat. In real estate, there's a couple of different ways to do this game, to do this deal. But there's only one way to become a millionaire in real estate. I mean, there's other ways, right? You could like work, 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 pay a lot of taxes. You could do it through the flip side. But then you got to do it again next year. And you got to do it again next year. And you, you can't really count yourself a millionaire if you ever miss a year of making money that way. But... If you're a net worth millionaire, 
you're always a millionaire as long as the market doesn't go down. Who's noticed the market might go down sometime soon? It's like, ah, oh, shit. Damn it. I was a millionaire that went down the other way. You know, crypto, crypto took some people out. Right? Who, who knows people who got hurt by crypto dropping? Yeah. 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 We know they got hurt. <laughs> We're okay with it because not too exposed. Right? Less than 2% of my wealth is exposed to crypto. What about the stock market? Who knows people got beat up in the stock market this year? Oh, they got beat up. Any of you get beat up in the stock market this year? <laughs> Give yourselves a round of applause. We survived. <laughs> it's not easy. It's not easy. I brought some notes for myself because we're in a digital age. Who noticed that you now have in your hand, in your cell phone, the power to do just about anything. You have more power than they had when they launched the satellites to the moon, when they launched things to uh, circle the, the planet. You got way more technology in your cell phone at this point than they did to take these ton, like multiple tons of pounds of machinery and throw it into space and get it to land on the freaking moon. In your, in your phone, in your pocket. You got battery technology. Who remembers when phones used to die in the middle of the day? Anybody remember that? Yeah. It's been a while, hasn't it? I mean, some of you. I know Nancy in here is like on her phone 24-7. Right, where's Nancy? Where is she? She will go play. <laughs> Those Californians. All right, so the reason I, I talk about technology, there's four types of leverage. Four types of leverage. And we're going to talk a lot about them all weekend long. Because the way you become a millionaire is through leverage. I want you to say leverage. Give it a shot. Leverage. The way you become a millionaire is through leverage. The way you become a millionaire is through leverage. If you don't have leverage. you don't have money. Right? Who likes money? Yes? Hold on. Are we at the 100 Millionaires Summit or what? Who likes money? Yeah. Yeah, we're not going to get judged. It's not Walmart. We're okay. Right? You, you try to say that shit at Walmart, they're like, oh, you're greedy. You're evil. What a bad person you are. But why? Because I'm paying your bill right now? Like, because I'm, I'm able to afford things? Because I'm able to go out and I got, you know, the, the extra stuff that I want? Like, I got the big TV? Actually, who here doesn't have the big TV? Yeah. Right? <laughs> I made money. The first time I made money, I was like, it's not going on a TV. I bought bonds. I bought boring-ass stocks. Like, think, uh, is this cutting out, by the way? No. You guys hear it fine. It's just a thing on stage. Give yourselves a round of applause. You got better hearing. <laughs> you're, you're in a slightly better situation. All right. So this event runs a little differently from other events. We run things a little bit differently. And... The reason is because we truly are all about building millionaires. The design of this event is so that you come through a process where you are the hero and you leave at the beginning of your journey. This is your call to action. This is where you got to escape your home world. You got to escape the normal place. And when you, you got here, you were transported. Who noticed we have lights on our walls? Nobody, nobody when they go to the home, they have all these lights on the walls, right? There's no, like, big center stage. I'm not talking about your TV. This is a little different. What feels different? People are like, raise your hands again. <laughs> and, and you're standing, and you're talking to people, and you're, you're going to be here for the next three days with us because this is the, the point where an alchemist goes into the fire. This is a point where somebody who's changing people's lives gets into the cauldron and changes their own life just a little bit. Little changes. There's... Some people in the room who have some very high net worth. Who knows that? Yeah. We can clap for them. We'd like those people. Yeah, absolutely. So we're going to do something fun. If you have more than $10,000 net worth, lots of money, stand up. More than $10,000 net worth. Actually, we're not going to stand up. I'm not going to have you guys do this up and down thing. Just raise your hand if you have more than $10,000 net worth. I mean, your car could be $10,000, right? Your, uh, your stocks or 401k. You might be able to sell one of your kids for $10,000. So, <laughs> certain countries. <laughs> All right, so hands up if you got more than $25,000 net worth. You know for sure. Okay. All right. Hands up if you got more than $100,000 net worth. You know for certain, for certain. 
All right, if your hands are not up right now, you might want to move to the front of the room because that's the reason you're not able to say that. Does that make sense? The people at the front of the room get more action? Right? People at the front of the room can literally say that they picked up like close to 400 bucks just by being at the front of the room. So who, who do we got in the back there? What, what's your name, sir? Stand up. In the, the blue shirt, the long hair, all the hair there. Stand up. Yeah. Can we get him a microphone? Is it possible to get this gentleman in the back a, a microphone? Do I have one up here that I can give him? I do. Come on up here. Just walk up here. No, sir. We're good. We got one right here for you. You, you got him? So much. Let's give Phil a big round of applause. <laughs> Phil and his team have been here for the last two days setting this amazing arena up. It doesn't just happen. Like, they, they've been working really hard for two days. Come on up here. Yeah. yeah All man. right, man. Come on. Woo. I got to have a conversation, right? Because I, I see somebody who reminds me a lot of myself. And what's your name? Robin. Robin. Nice to meet you, Robin. Nice I'm Walter. Yeah. So you're on stage now at the 100 Millionaire Summit. There's, like, probably 200 yeah. people here. <laughs> what was it about that seat? It's a little far back, you know. In the back. It's not in the front. You can't pick up all the money on the stage. Yeah. 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 What was it? Why, why would you do that to yourself? Um, I don't know. I just want to be. I don't know either. I don't know. I, I want to meet you, Robin. I'm trying to, I'm trying to connect. Right. I'm having a hard time. So, so you, a guy I really want to hang with, right? Like, right. I want to hang with you. Because right. I saw the hand wasn't up, and I was like, oh, my God. He's, making, he's got less than 100000 net worth. Which, by the way, give him a round of applause for being up here, right? right. Yeah. Full disclosure. Yeah, full disclosure, <laughs> right? <laughs> This is the first time anybody has ever told him in front of a room of 200 people that he doesn't have $100,000 net worth. Not easy to take. <laughs> now, Robin, that's something we'd like to change, right? Well, yeah, obviously. Okay, so <laughs> obviously, that's what everybody would say, but it's not true. Not everybody obviously wants to change their net worth, which is why it stays the way it is. Now, the secret to increasing your net worth is getting closer to successful people. Proximity is power. Who's heard that before? Proximity is power? Ooh, smart room. Give yourselves a round of applause. Smart room. Robin, I'm going to give you an opportunity. Okay. A crazy, crazy opportunity. All right. Unheard of opportunity. All ears. All right. There's a spot right there in the executive section. Can we get him an executive lanyard? Yeah. Yes? Okay. Right there. Right there next to Larry Steinhaus. Okay. You will never be the same. All right. Give him a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, man. You're welcome, brother. <laughs> Get out there. Let that be the lesson. Everybody who is sitting in the back, you might want to move to the front because proximity is power. The closer you get to people who are successful and have money. By the way, VIP members, did we have fun last night? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Did we have fun yesterday in the morning when we were working together? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So the VIPs, well... They obviously didn't buy VIP because it comes with a sick white lanyard. They didn't buy the VIP because of the backpack with all the swag in it. They didn't buy VIP because they get to hang out with me an entire extra day. It wasn't just because we got to hang out with Vinny Chopra and learn from a billionaire, you know, how to think and operate and then have dinner together. It wasn't for the limo, right? It wasn't for the limo. No way. Why would somebody spend that kind of money to get VIP tickets just for a limo ride? No. It was because they know something. They know that they're very important people. That's what VIP stands for. It's pretty obvious, right? Yeah. And very important people hang with very important people. So yesterday's talk was all about leadership, about leveling up, scaling, getting your business to the next level, getting more out of your business, out of yourself, while doing less work. Who here knows they want to be a VIP too? <laughs> Let's give our VIPs a round of applause. They paid for this event this year. So thank you to the VIPs. We wouldn't have had as much fun and lights if it wasn't for your investment early in the business, early in this event. So thank you. Executives, many of you are here for free. Why would the VIPs pay so much and the general pay so much, but I put the executives in for free? Has anybody got a guess? These are my players. Executives are people I want to build a relationship with. These are coaches, speakers, authors, millionaire builders. These are people who are playing the game at a super high level. 
Hands to the camera if you know the executives are players. Absolutely. Some of them know their players, which is why they bought the tickets so they could hang with the other players. Let's give our executives a big round of applause. Very smart room. <laughs> everything you do, or I guess everything I do, has multiple purposes behind it. Who here likes the idea of having a lot more intention in their lives? Where you do one thing, one thing, and it does 10 things, 20 things, 30 things, the compound effect. That's why we invest in the first place, right? That's why this weekend we're investing in ourselves, the asset that we carry with us everywhere. If you lost everything, had to start all over again, would you become a millionaire within a year? That's a question I know every millionaire has asked themselves, and they know the answer is yes. For everybody who's never made a million, the answer is probably no. Right? You'd probably find your way to a comfortable living situation at best. Does that make sense? We agree. You'd find yourself within a year to a comfortable living situation. You, it wouldn't be hell for the entire time. Three, and is it possible to make sure that I get a sexy water bottle up here somewhere? And these chairs are totally on the way. We're going to slide these back for now. Look, while I'm doing some cleaning house, I want to do some cleaning house with each one of you. You've got a book. Who got a booklet today? Excellent. Oh, Vinny, these are nice. Oh, wow. Man, I'm never going back. <laughs> this is nice. All right, so I had the sun, I had those lights on me a minute ago, and they were blaring. It was hot up here, right? It was like the sun. And now it's perfect. You know what we should do? We should turn the lights from the, the back there, turn them off, turn these lights above on, and make all of this boring. Wouldn't that be better so I could just take these glasses off and be fine? You don't agree? No. You, you think it's better to have all this, all this bright light on us up here? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. You know what? I see, I see the world differently. I see it differently because I'm wearing a different set of specs. They, I'm, I have an improved situation because I learned how to wear the right sunwear. Can we agree that has worked for all of us when we're driving? Yes? Who's changed their tools, changed the filter they were seeing the world through, and had a totally different experience. By show of hands, who's had that happen? Yes? I want you to turn to your partner. By the way, the person on the side of you is your partner for now. Turn to your partner, and I want you to say, I can change my perception. I want you to turn to your other partner. That's the other person on the other side of you. I want you to say, I can get different results. Give your partners on either side a high five and say, yes, you can. <laughs> I love it. Vinny, your glasses are right here, my man. <laughs> yes, if you don't mind, let's give Dorina a big round of applause. She walks on stage. Isn't she gorgeous? Woo! Woo -woo! All right. Thank you. Appreciate you. It's amazing. Give her a big round of applause. She does so much work. So much. Who here noticed we got sweet bottles? Anybody got a sweet bottle? Yeah, throw your bottle up. Hold it up. Hold up where the bottle's at. They're still in bags? Come on, these are, these are utility, right? You use these all weekend long. Fill them up with water because we're going to be exhausting you. And if you don't stay hydrated, you'll have a hard time waking up. One of the reasons that people end up with um, jet lag is because they didn't stay hydrated. If you want to have no jet lag, stay hydrated. If you want to not have Millionaire Summit jet lag, just stay hydrated throughout the weekend. Take your naps, right? We're, we're back in like little child stage now. We're here to level up. And so we've got we to like just really be careful with our bodies this weekend. So there will be opportunities to drink alcohol. I'm going to strongly suggest drinking water with it. We know how that works, you know? Alcohol, two glasses of water, alcohol, two glasses of water. Like, make sure that you're able to stay in the game all weekend long. Now, of course, if you drink a lot of alcohol, 
it will be a lot easier for me to sell you something, which I'm okay with, right? Like, bring them to me soft and beaten up. I'm all right. <laughs> Let me also tell you, at events like this, who's been to three-day events? And at the end of the event, they're like, give us your money. We're selling you a product all weekend long. They're shoving the product down your throat. Has anybody been to one of those? Yes. Excellent. This is not like that. I am going to sell you something for sure because I love you and I want to see your success. And so I built a great product and I'm going to offer it. But I'm going to do that tomorrow. And I'm going to, throughout this entire weekend, tease you about it. And if you decide to move into it, great. And if you decide not to, I'm going to interview you in the back hallway afterwards and be like, what is wrong with you? I don't understand. Just help, like work with me. Is that cool if I'm very honest about how this situation works? <laughs> I'm here to build millionaires. The reason I sell things is because it's a barrier to entry. If you can't bring the money, there's a good chance you're not ready to get there. Is that okay? Yes. It's just to, it's just to qualify people. And by the way, you have to do this in your business too. If you're afraid to charge people for a service, there's a good chance the service is either not that great or you don't believe in your service. Because sometimes it's really great and you just don't believe it. Has anybody ever not believed in themselves and had something amazing to share with somebody else? So this weekend I will offer a product. I call it Alchemist Mastery. I'll be very honest with you. I'm not going to sell it to you right now. You know, don't even try to go buy it right now. You don't have a choice. It's not an option, but you can open your book to the back page, and you can take a look at it. I think it's 36,000. It doesn't say it in the back book because I added some stuff afterwards. It's like, I don't even know the numbers. It's 36K, which means I'm probably going to offer some sort of discount later. Is that okay if I offer an amazing deal this weekend, over the weekend? If it's amazing, is that okay if I offer it? Yes? Okay, cool. So it's called Mastery, Alchemist Mastery. Now, the reason I share this with you now is because I want you to be able to stay focused on the sessions we're in. These are very important. I can't have you distracted on, is he selling to me now? Is he selling to me now? Is he selling to me now? Is now the time where he sells to me? If I raise my hand, does that mean I have to buy something? No, right? The only way you buy something is you take your, your wallet out of your pocket and you put it in front of somebody and then you fill out a form, right? You'll know, you'll know money is being spent because your wallet will have been pulled out of your pocket and you're putting it on the table and you'll be buying something. We get this? Okay. That's honesty. That's the best way to work with people. It's the best way to move people forward. There is no other product that I am offering this weekend. It'll be one product. It's one big dollar amount. I put it on the screen so your mind can get used to it. Is it okay if I'm very transparent with how we do this? Excellent. Very good. You might want to do this with your clients also. Who here works with motivated sellers? Awesome. Tomorrow, I'm going to show you a process on how to create the ultimate offer and how to show up so that you almost always get a yes in your negotiations. Is that valuable? Yeah. And today, we're going to walk you through a series of processes to evaluate yourself, to find yourself, to evaluate your business, to evaluate your strategy so that we know what you're doing is getting you to where you want to go. Because if we find out that what you're doing is getting you to a place you don't want to go, we're going to have to make the change this weekend so we don't spend the rest of the year doing the wrong things. We agree? Yeah. But spend the rest of the year doing the wrong things. Yes. Just stay gentle, P there. Make sure that's right. Everything we do on stage is intentional, yes? yes. Absolutely. The reason is it intentional is because I've had 362 days to prepare. I looked at last year and I said, there's things that got to change so we can get this year and efficiently build 100 millionaires. Who likes the sound of that? Yeah. All right. Turn to your partner and tell them you're in the right room. <clears throat> now, because I'm smart, I use tools. And because you're smart, you also use tools. Let's hold up these workbooks. These are fantastic tools. And I'm not just saying that because I spent an accumulative 12 hours putting this thing together. I'm saying it because I did it with a very powerful intention, which is what I want you to have this weekend. So we're going to open up, by the way, the only thing wrong with this workbook, I got to just throw this out there, is the front page. I wanted that to be here. So 
you know, if we can look past the front page to my favorite page, which is not this one, it's the one right after it. I want you to look at this page right here. That's my social media instructions. It's very simple. Use social media. Done. Hands to the camera if you know how to use a social media platform. Have ever opened one of those, ever? Have ever used the symbol hashtag? We know what we're talking about. All right, so the instructions are this. At every chance, at any point when your mind says, wow, that'd be good content, stop, pause, pull out your phone, and then create some sort of content. And then once said content is created, hashtag 100 mm like M&Ms, but not M&Ms, 100 mm summit. Now the reason we're gonna do this is because after the summit, there's going to be a little bit of a cool raffle. And I'm gonna offer something ridiculous to the person who is the most outlandish and entertaining and engagement driven at the summit. The person who really levels up the game and really creates some sick content is gonna get something very special. Is that okay if I give something away to somebody who's really promoting, marketing, and making this event fun for everybody? Yes? I have your permission. Excellent. Give yourselves a round of applause. This workbook has tools I have never included before, including an agenda, which now means I have to stick to something. In the past, I'd run it, and it was like kind of mysterious, and you'd be like, all right, what do we do next? I don't know because there's no agenda, so I just assume everything he's doing is right. Now I have an agenda to stick to. Who here knows it's good to have tools that hold you accountable? It's even better to have other people that hold you accountable? Who knows, with over 200 people holding me accountable, I don't have a freaking choice. <laughs> or they'll all know. So I'm just going to double check. Oh, look, big gaps. I can do this. This is going to be all right. I didn't tell you which speaker is going to be speaking on which day. There's a reason for that. Sometimes you may see a speaker like you see like Ron Bowling, and you think, I'm not going to that session, you know, because Ron Bowling. I know, right? Who knows Ron? Who knows? <laughs> I'm actually kidding. Ron will not be on stage this weekend. So <laughs> if you know Ron, you get what I'm talking about. But day one, we got Vinny. You can actually look through this and learn a little bit about each one of the speakers. I've been to a couple of events. I thought that was really nice. If you never met the speaker or you just want to know a little more before they get on stage, you can run through the first page, the first few pages. Afterwards, we've got the 52 weeks to wealth, 52 millionaire wealth principles. These are the wealth principles that have not just made me a millionaire, but they've made our other millionaires millionaires. Whether they were like nerdy like me following all the instructions or they were just figuring it out on their own, they still had to follow these processes. Maybe not all of them, but when you put all of them together, you get a very powerful, impactful business. Who here knows the rules are the rules because they are the rules? Yeah. Can't change the rules. The world runs the way the world runs. But if you can advantage yourself to the rules, you can have some really cool sick advantages. Who wants sick advantages? Unfair advantages wants to just slay the game. Yeah. Let's try that again. Unfair advantages over all the competition say yes. Yeah. Say yes. Tony Robbins, yes! Yeah. <laughs> I always wanted to do that. I love that guy. I wish I was as tall as him, though. All right. Most, is, most important page. Page numero uno. You're going to be very familiar with these instructions, but I'm telling you this is the most important page because sometimes shit happens. Who here has ever lost something at an event like this? Like you, you wrote really great notes into your notebook, and then you went to break or lunch and you came back and somebody moved all the chairs and your notes were gone. Anybody have that moment where you're just like, oh my God, I, I wrote the Bible and somebody went and stole it. <laughs> that person probably went and built a million dollar business that year, right? <laughs> so the instructions are this. Everybody pull this out now. We're gonna do this together. This is the only, the only exercise you must do today to survive this event. Pull it out at the top. Put your name. There's a big line there, right? It's big. Put your full name there. And then underneath it is your cell phone. Go ahead, Gary. It's okay. 
Do you need another one? Do you need a workbook? Do you, Anna, do you need a workbook? You do. Do you need pens? Uh, Andrew, can we make sure that anybody who doesn't have a workbook or pens gets one? Put your hands up if you're missing something. Hands up if you're missing something. Okay, we're going to clean this up right now. Name, and then underneath it, your cell phone. Your cell phone is very important because sometimes these books get lost. But if they got lost and it had your name or your cell phone, it could find its way back to you. And that would be pretty cool, yes? yes. This was the first page I created <laughs> because I personally have lost my workbook and I'm pretty sure I had a more than a million dollar idea there. Then you're going to put the date. Because this is something I wish I did in all of my workbooks going to these different events. Because now I look back and I'm like, I don't know when I was thinking that way, but I don't think that way anymore. Or that was a really good idea. What year was that that I discovered it? How have I implemented that over the time? So put the date. Because you're going to look back at this in a few years and you're going to say, man, like, that's where I figured that out. That's the first time that was impactful to me. Or, wow, that was impactful to me back then? I am so past that. That was so pre-millionaire status. Wow. Who knows? You've got what it takes to become a millionaire. Yes. Yeah? Let's, let's take a round, look around and, and let's stand up millionaires. We're going to do a millionaire ceremony tomorrow. Let's stand up all of our millionaires really quickly. Yeah, like if you're a millionaire, you stand up. That's what this is. Yeah. Can we get lights on the millionaires? Let's just, um, yeah. All right, so the millionaires that are not standing, if you could stand up now. Thank you. Oh, keep standing. Keep standing. Yep. There we go. All right. Thank you. Take a look around, everybody. Do you notice the proximity of millionaires is in the front row? Who's noticing this? Yes? This is your opportunity to get closer to millionaires. What I'm going to do for you is a huge favor. Uh, team, can we pull out the back two rows of chairs? Just all the back two rows of chairs, just pull them out, put them along the wall. Andrew, can we make sure that that happens? Awesome. Thank you. So anybody in the back, back two rows, your chairs are being removed. You're going to have to move forward. We understand the instructions here? It's not your millionaire's fault. It's the fact that millionaires sit in the front that is a sign that you, from now on, in order to catch up to the millionaires, must sit in the front. Let's give our millionaires a big round of applause so everybody's moving. Great job. Excellent. I love it. Take a seat, millionaires. You are my beautiful, soul-filled, fantastic, powerful, caring, ambitious, loyal, disciplined, motivated, ingenious people who probably all you did was buy some assets. Who just bought some assets and got rich? Yeah. It wasn't that hard, was it? It's crazy. Well, we know now, but... We didn't know when we started. So when I, when I got into this real estate thing, who doesn't know me? Who's never heard me before, never seen me before? This is my first, like my first time high-fiving you in person. Excellent. So there's, there's a few of you. So for anybody who doesn't know me, I started off with nothing, like less than nothing. But I didn't know. I really thought that I was doing okay because my family was raised I was raised by my family who was, you know, immigrants from Portugal. They came over here and they worked hard. They worked really hard. My grandfather worked two jobs. My grandmother worked two jobs. And she had two sons, my father and my uncle. And they were hard-working people. Who grew up in a hard-working family? All right. And I, I loved, loved, loved my grandfather. What I learned from him is two things. He said, if you want to, because I asked him, like, Vavu, what do you do for fun? I always saw him working. He was always doing something, right? I said, what do you do for fun? He said, son, a beer in one hand and a hammer in the other. That's fun for me. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to model that. That's a good idea. Because he's, he's the richest guy I know, right? Smartest guy I know. Look. Whose house did we all go to when it was party time, right? Christmas, Thanksgiving. He had all the parties. That's my grandfather's house. Of course, it is because we lived upstairs. In the <laughs> yeah. We would go all the way from the second floor down to the first floor and then into the basement because the Portuguese always finished the basement. 
And if you're from the West Coast, the basement is this thing that they dig under the ground <laughs> where, we're, you know, usually nobody goes, essentially. Like, you just, like, store stuff down there. But the Porsches were, were like, you know what we could do? We could have a pretend apartment and then live in the basement. That way, anytime strangers come over, the pretend apartment is always clean. Who, who knows what I'm talking about? Like, Italians do this, the French do this, the Portuguese do this, uh, the Polish do this. So it's, uh, in New England, if you've got basements, you finish your basements and you do this. So we would go down to my grandfather's house, and he had, you know, the fake apartment. So that, again, must be rich, right? He has this whole apartment he doesn't even use. And then they're living in the, in the basement, right? And he, he owned this, three, uh, this four family. And my dad used to tell me something. He used to say, you know, yeah, your, your grandfather owns the house. I don't own the house. Who knows, that might have an impact on my mindset. Yeah. Yeah, fortunately, I modeled my grandfather and not my father. Fortunately, I looked up to my grandfather and I said, man, like, he's, he's the one, right? He's the authority. And I, I had a hard time getting to know him because my grandfather only spoke Portuguese. So 16 years old, I went downstairs to the basement, and I asked my grandfather, I was like, can you teach me Portuguese? Because I didn't know a word. Because my mother was very controlling, and she didn't allow us to go and spend time with our grandparents. Anybody had weird interpersonal shit in their family? We're like, yeah. So, like, I didn't get to see and grow up with my grandparents, which made me idolize them more, thankfully. Because my grandmother, when I started spending time with her when I was 16... Finally, I lived one floor away, well, one, one fake floor away. <laughs> I finally got to go spend time with them. I realized my grandmother was like my best friend because she would tell me things like, you got to work hard, Khadid. You got to save the money. You put the money, the money comes to you, it goes in the bank right away. No brincaria. The brincaria means playing around. <laughs> so the money has to go in the bank. You save it. I'm like... Of all, what are we saving for? <laughs> you know what she said, right? Oh, you never know. <laughs> so, Jonathan, but what if we did know? What would it be? <laughs> like, what are we saving for? She, she would be very serious. No, no, don't tell anybody how much you make. say, because you never know. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> so I was like, shit, I just don't know. But I know for sure. You take the money and you put it in the bank. And then you don't tell anybody how much is in the bank or how much you're making. Who was raised with similar constructs, similar ideas? Yeah, because you never know. <laughs> Woo. And then when social media came out, guess what advice I got? She says, oh, don't post pictures, Walter. Don't post the videos. Don't post the pictures because you know why? I said, <laughs> Give yourself a round of applause. <laughs> there are four types of leverage. Four types of leverage. The first is going to be people leverage, labor. This is what I was doing for my employers when I was working for them. I was being leveraged. My grandmother was encouraging me to work those extra hours. I'd come home, I'd be like, Favo, I had to do overtime. She said, you take the overtime every time they offer for you, Khadid, because I love you, and you love money. <laughs> I was like, okay. I was like, why, Favo? Why do I do it? Because you never know. <laughs> All right. So anytime there was overtime, I took the overtime. Anytime there was a, an opportunity to work an extra job, a side job, do roofs for people, do floors for people, I took the job. I took the job. I took the job. Because I never knew. And I kept storing the money. And after years of storing and storing and storing, and years, guys, of storing and storing and storing, I had 40, no, I had $10,000 saved. After years of you never know and storing and working overtime and putting the money aside and putting the money aside and putting the money aside because you can't save your way to rich. Who's already learned this? You can't save your way to rich. Man, that's some bullshit. 
I love my grandma. She passed away a few years ago. And she said to me something very important, which I'll, I'll tell you. Let me tell you about the bad thing first. So as I was, because by the way, only having $10,000 saved was not the worst, right? That was okay. That was like me thinking I was winning. I bought a house. I got married. I was rocking and rolling. I was doing the white picket fence thing. Literally had a white picket fence because that's what everybody else did. I was 22 years old, kicking ass, taking names, bought my first house. Renovated the heck out of it did all the stuff that they say you're supposed to do. I had two cars, so I was thinking I'm rich. Of course, one was a Toyota Corolla, one was a Ford Ranger, so you know, we weren't, we weren't like riding the range or the Lambo to work, but and still, we were still going to work. I was driving an hour to work every day. And as I was going through this process of like being the man, like, like outpacing all of my friends, because in my community, I was kicking ass, right? All my friends, like, you know, you buy a house at 22, like all your friends are like, whoa, how'd you do that, right? Anybody know? Anybody else buy a house at 22? Me too. All right, give these guys a round of applause. So you know what I'm talking about, right? As, as you're going through life, you're like, you're winning, 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 winning at these small little goals. Oh, wow, you got a car? Who gives a shit? Well, you got married? So? You know what I, I reward or I, I celebrate? People who have been married 20 years. You don't get points for getting married. Who gives a shit? Like, we'll see. <laughs> right? Now, on your 20th anniversary, we're going to throw a banger, right? Big party. But that first, like, I don't give a shit about the first 10 years. That's so what years? First seven years, that's so what years? You know, I, I didn't make it past three years, so I can't. <laughs> so we were doing all this stuff. We're, we're hustling. We're a young couple. We're growing. We're like, life is exciting. And one day I come home and I say, I don't want to work anymore. And she looks at me with this look in her eyes like, are you insane? Like, that's the purpose of life is we work. It's why we're together. It's because you work so hard and you love work, and work is what we do. And I told her, I was like, yeah, but I started Googling stuff on the Internet about how to become a millionaire. I did a spreadsheet, and it, took, it looked like it was going to take 20 years the way I was going. And I realized, like, I now realize I want to be a millionaire more than I want to go to work. And the work thing's not pulling the millionaire game off, so I got to figure this other thing off, figure it out. And I was cutting the grass one day. It's my normal world, cutting the grass. And something just hit me. I just realized, I'm the Lord of the land. All of this is mine. Hear ye crickets and frogs and grasshoppers. Thou shalt move out of my lawnmower's way lest thee die. And I'm... I'm blasting through the yard, and then something hits me. These motherfuckers aren't paying rent. <laughs> it brought me back to something my dad used to say. My dad used to say, if it doesn't pay rent, get it out. And he was talking about mindset stuff. My dad's a smart guy. He never did the, the rich thing, but he definitely really put some really good nuggets in my head when I was growing up. He said, if it doesn't pay you rent, if it's not paying you rent, get rid of it. Another way to say that is if, is if it doesn't serve you, Lose that belief system, right? If it doesn't serve you, just lose it. Get rid of it. Thank you, Jack. If it doesn't serve you, get rid of it. So if it doesn't pay rent, kick it out. My dad used to like rent references. So like growing up, I was always very used to rent references because my grandfather was a landlord of one building, four units. So I felt a little bit comfortable with that. And then as I was cutting the grass, I started getting this like stomach ache. This like sickness, this awareness that I might be in prison. And it was like, I just, it was like Neo waking up from the matrix. Like in that moment, I was just like unplugged and holy shit, no way. And this, this fire was like, you got to go change your life. You got you to gotta switch things up. So I went and I told my wife and I was like, we're going to list this house. I'm going to buy a multifamily. And she said, no, under no circumstances do we sell this house. I'm just buying a bigger house. That's not good. A bigger house means a bigger mortgage, <laughs> which means my ass has to go back to that job and, like, beg for a raise or more responsibility or more, more leveling up of the, the work I was doing. So I was like, we got to change this trajectory. And so what I started doing was seeing if I could buy a house without any money, seeing if I could buy a house with no money down. Who, who's gone down this rabbit hole? Yeah. I... 
was not very good at my research back then, and I couldn't find a way to do it. I know this sounds insane, but I could not find a way to buy a house with no money down. Because all they used to say was like, you got to do subject to, you got to do seller financing, you've got to uh, assume the mortgage or do asset-based lending. And I've read all those, and my, I was like, fog, as I was reading through them. And then at the bottom, and that's how it's done, I'm like, this doesn't make sense. That must be for rich people. Who's ever read something like that, heard something like that, and just totally missed it because you're just like, that's not me who does that stuff? Anybody? Okay. So that, that I know, like, now I say these things all the time, and I use these things, and I do them, but back then, I seriously, like, any time I'd see subject to or solid financing, I'd just be like, two. <laughs> I've missed the whole thing, the whole, right over my head. And then... So I, I just called up the banks, and they were like, no, no, you can't do that 3% down thing anymore. It's 25% down if you're buying an investment property. That's how it is. I went through the, the rules of society, the, the regular financial system, and they kept telling me 25%. Has anybody had these conversations with the banks? And then you go to bigger pockets, and like, you just got to keep calling banks. But then you keep calling banks, and all the banks keep telling you the same thing. Yes? Okay. It's because, obviously, seller financing subject to and a couple of other strategies are the way to go. Lease options even. There's, there's a lot of different ways, but the traditional financing structure doesn't necessarily like to do this. Unless you're doing over owner-occupy with a bunch of partners. Who's done that too? Owner-occupy with partners? Anybody? Yeah? Me too. I did it like five times. And it worked. It worked fantastic. Thank you, Jared. Let's give Jared a round of applause. His, uh, his camera crew is fantastic. These guys are amazing. <laughs> Ethan over here is a beast. He got us in the limo last night. He's all choo, choo, choo. Boop, 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 boop. We look great. We looking good right now? Oh, yeah. Let's give Ethan a big round of applause. <laughs> all right. The reason, the reason we do this event the way we do it with all the cameras is because this is a marketing event. This is designed to attract future millionaires. Everything we do here is to build for next year. We want to bring more people to the event next year so that we can serve on a higher level. So you're going to see that we're constantly telling you, and if I don't constantly tell you, I want you to constantly tell yourself, this is content, post it. This is content, post it. This is content, tag Walter. This is content, put one, hashtag 100mm summit so that we can serve more people next year. That's constantly our goal. It's constantly marketing. Everything we do on every level is to attract more people. And at the same time, because we do everything all at once, we're building millionaires as we go. Document your process. So I was going through this process. Obviously, I put the house on the market. My wife says, this is no good. How do you put the house on the market without talking to me? And I was like, an agent just showed up. She listed it. It's on the market now. I don't know. Now we have an open house this weekend. Has anybody ever been a weak little bitch and done stuff like that? <laughs> like behind somebody's back and then been like, Apologize, all right, a little easier. So I, I, did, I did do that. So long story short, we sell the house, we move into my dad's apartment, and because he went through a divorce and he wasn't using the apartment at the time because he was living with his girlfriend's house, which, you know, dad's a player. So <laughs> we were in his apartment, and it was supposed to be like one month because we're buying this other house, three family, and it just, you know, was sitting there waiting. And one month turned into four months, turned into six months, turned to eight months. And my loving, beautiful wife turned into, this sucks, I hate you, you're the worst thing that ever happened to me, I want a divorce. Yeah. And the first time I heard I want a divorce, I was like, ah, people say that. Grew up with that, you know? No. We got 18 more years, obviously, based on that forecast. <laughs> and, um, but I have good taste in women. The women I choose are very strong, very determined women. So she was like, no, no, divorce, and I want it now, because she noticed I was picking up momentum on this entrepreneur thing, which is a very uncertain path. Who's noticed entrepreneurs were a slightly uncertain path? Yes, it can be a little... And so I was, I was processing the fact that she wanted to get a divorce. And so I said, okay, you know what we're going to do? I'm going to go hard on this relationship because I go hard on everything I do. I'm going to go hard and fix this thing. I'm going to go to Portugal with her father, with her. We're going to go on this big trip, and she's going to discover that she wants to be with me because 
I'm the guy who went to Portugal. <laughs> you don't have to be smart to get rich. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> so we go on this trip. It's amazing. I'm like, oh. oh. By the way, I start hitting the gym now because I realize I might, I might not have the stable life that I thought I had very soon. So I start hitting the gym. I'm doing push-ups on the beach. I remember Portugal just being like a great place. New beaches. It was blast. I was like, Portugal, you guys know how to do it. I come back, and after being there for like a day, she's like, want a divorce. I was like, fuck. <laughs> so I, I remember um, she called me. She called me and was like, hey, you need to get out of the house because every time I go there, I feel like, you know, you're angry, your energy is too intense, you're fighting, like, you're just, you're just pretty violent, and I don't, I can't, I don't feel safe with you at the house. I was like, okay, then you can leave. And she's like, it's my house, too. And I bet in court, the judge is going to make you leave. Uh-huh. So, I, frustratedly, thought about it for a moment and realized she's right. So I sat down on the bucket of paint as I was painting my apartment that I just bought and still hadn't collected rent yet. Wasn't sure if that was going to work out. And I was sitting on the bucket thinking, because I grew up suicidal. I grew up you know, in a household with a mom who was like pushing me all the time, just just pushing me down, like beating me up emotionally. She never hit me, but I remember thinking every day, how could I end this? You know, eight years old, nine years old, ten years old, twelve years old, thirteen years old, just thinking, how do I get out from under this evil dictator? How do I separate myself from this situation? And I remember, you know, all, all sorts of different ways I, I attempted to uh, take my life. And it was always my little brother who would like catch me or, or hear about what I had attempted to do and he'd come crying and he, he'd talk to me and say, Walter, I love you so much. I can't live without you. You, you have to stay here. You have to, you have to, you know, like it's okay. It's not that bad. I don't know why you would want to end. Like, like I have so much fun with you. I, lo I love you so much. Like, like he begged me beg me not to, not to take my life because then he'd be alone. And I was sitting on the bucket and I, was, I hadn't thought about it in years, but at that moment I thought, yeah, okay. This, this is probably all the things stacked up that justify uh, not being here anymore. Then I thought of my brother. You know, for about a minute I was like, that's good reason, but I'm feeling like, like he'd be fine. And because I could justify that, I went back to the thought, you know, just drive down the highway really quick, turn the wheel into a tree and be done, like easy. And I thought of my dad. I thought of my uncle. And it wasn't enough. The, the family just wasn't enough for me to stay. And then I thought, what if there's somebody else suffering like this right now? What if somebody else has been beaten by money, has been beaten by their greed, by their, their negativity, their, their scarcity, their unawareness of how this world works? What if somebody else is out there feeling this way? And what if I can figure out how not to feel this way? If I can figure this thing out, then maybe I could be the person who helps them figure it out so that they never have to feel this way. Maybe I could get so good at it, I could prevent somebody from ever getting to this point. And then I remember thinking, and I, I just, I looked up to the plaster ceiling in that apartment, and I said, God, if there's, if there's somebody out there who could teach me, put them in front of me. You don't even have to make it easy. I will, I will beg, scrape, work hard, whatever, just put somebody in front of me, and that I'll know when they're there, and I will do whatever it takes to learn from them, the process, and then once I've learned, I will teach. I will build as many people as I possibly can for as long as I'm alive. And in that moment, 
It hit me like a lightning bolt. I felt inspired. I felt purpose. For the first time in my entire life, I felt like there was something I was supposed to do beyond me. And I started walking towards the kitchen. I started feeling this energy rising inside of me, invigorating me, feeling like electric bolts. And my life had completely sucked a minute ago. And it still sucked. And it was, it was a deep awareness of how bad things were. But as I was walking, I felt like it didn't matter anymore because there was something bigger for me to do. There was people's lives for me to change. I didn't know who they were. I didn't know where they were. I didn't know how I was going to do it. Because remember, I was still a pathetic person with no knowledge, no skills. I was losing all of my, my income, my net worth. I'd lost my job. And I lost a lot of money in the divorce, all my cash. But I looked out across the kitchen, that beat up apartment. I looked out and I saw another property. And I somehow knew it would be mine. And I looked a little further and I saw another property. And I actually, I had that one under contract. And I, saw, I looked out further and the other one, I said, I knew that's, that's going to be mine too. And then I realized I came with this awareness that I was going to own this whole block. And I made a commitment. When I own the block, that's when I start. When I own the block, that's when I go and I start helping others buy real estate. Because I had this belief system that one property didn't make you a successful investor. Two properties didn't make you an investor. Three properties didn't make you an investor. Three properties, in my mind, grow up in Fall River, I thought three properties made you Porsches. <laughs> so it was four. If I could get to four rental properties, I knew I was a real estate investor. And so that was my mindset. I said, I'm going to get to four, and then I'm going to teach. I'm going to get to four, and then I'll start showing the other guys in the city how to do this. And that's why we're here today. I didn't realize it was going to turn into something like this. I didn't realize we were going to be on stages. I was definitely not the guy who belongs on stages when I got the calling to be on stage. It was 2015 when I got the calling. There was a man on stage. He was pretty bald. His name was Dennis Cummings. Who met Dennis last year? Met the coach that got me started. 2015, I was at an event called Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. And Dennis took a look out into the crowd, and he said something inspiring. He said, I'm pretty sure he was only talking to me. He looked out and he said, we need more trainers. Because most people are too deathly afraid to get up here on stage and share how to become successful. Most people are too deathly afraid of sharing their knowledge in the world needs more trainers. In a world full of followers, it needs more... Yes. In a world full of followers, it needs more... Leaders. That's right. And so, he said leaders, the trainers, they're interchangeable to me. Because if you're in front, you're probably follow the people are following you. They're being led. They're being trained by whatever it is you seek. There's something... Uh, I'll have to go into MDARS later. Who would like to know what MDARS stands for? I'm going to go into it a little bit later. But for now, I want you to all stand up with me. And I want you to feel that energy that I felt when I was sitting on the bucket. We'll start it right here. I want you to feel that energy of my life hasn't quite gotten to where I want it to be. And as I move my hand lower, recognize that disappointment, that depression, that disgust with who you are and what you've accomplished. And as I move it back up, feel a little bit accomplished, like maybe you're walking across that kitchen feeling like you have a purpose. There's a reason for you to be here. There's people who care about you. You're important. There's still work to be done. And you're pretty damn good at it. We're feeling this right now? Feel that energy? So if the bar comes down, it's a pretty nasty place. It's a bad space. It's no good. But when you bring the bar back up, it's like, hey, hey, hey. You're welcome. I showed up today. <laughs> Give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs>